Mark and headless platforms are now being rapidly adopted by brands and retailers to deliver their digital experiences. Although the use of native cloud, APIs and microservices are a massive leap forward for businesses making them more agile and making technical architectures more composable, there is a design gap. And that design gap is between the consumable services of a Mac platform and the development of the digital experience. And it's this gap that GraphQL tries to close. And in this video, we'll go through what GraphQL is, why it's different to REST, and how it fits and supports the Mac-based architecture. So let's waste no more time, let's get to it. So what is this gap that keeps opening up when you design headless and Mac-based systems? To understand what's going on, you first need to understand how machines and computers and systems talk to each other. If we take a really simple view of a microservice, we can see it in two key parts. There is obviously the part which is the code that performs actions and the interface which is how it talks to other systems. Most web service APIs and microservices talk to each other through their interfaces using a protocol called REST. REST provides a really simple way for apps and systems to talk to each other over the internet using a lower level protocol called HTTP which we won't go into today. REST allows you to access resources like a product or perform actions like add to a basket. REST is a really simple protocol and it uses a URL to refer to the resource you're trying to access like a product or a piece of content. It uses what is referred to as a verb to represent the type of action you want to make, such as get a resource, such as a product or a piece of content, or post an action like an add to basket. REST uses something called a request body to pass data into an API, and it uses a response body to get data that was requested from an API. This really simple method for applications to talk to APIs means that you can build front-end applications that call microservices to get a resource or trigger an action as a customer is actually interacting with your UI. This is fantastic for simple applications, but it does have some downsides when it comes to more complicated apps. Front-end applications have to be much more aware of your API backends and how they're architected, which means that if you want to make a change to the API or even swap out a different service, you have to make far more changes to your front-end. The granularity of the microservices could mean that you have to make lots of simultaneous microservices calls for very complex UIs. Often, a call to a microservice may rely on a call from a previous microservice, and this creates a dependency. And these dependencies can create chains of microservice calls that have to be called in sequence. For example, retrieving a customer's basket may just give you a set of product IDs, and then you need to go and call a product service to retrieve the product data for each one of those IDs. And this particular issue is called underfetching because you're not retrieving all the data you need in a single call. Another issue is that REST API calls are designed to give you a complete set of data, and this data may be more than you actually need. Again, if we take the example of a customer's basket where it makes the calls to the product service, you'll get the entire product record, when all you really need is its name, its price, and its thumbnail. And this issue is called overfetching because you're getting more data than you need from every single request. If you'd like to know more and want a more detailed description and example of this, you should take a look at my other video, What is GraphQL? And I'll leave the link here for you in the corner. If you like this video so far, can you do me one little favor? Can you just scroll down a little bit and press that like button so this video can be shared with many others? Thank you. So what is GraphQL? Well, GraphQL is a new way for systems to talk to each other, and it's a relatively new protocol created by Facebook, and it's been quickly adopted to work both alongside REST interfaces and to replace REST APIs. As I said earlier, REST has been designed for computers to browse resources in the same way we browse the internet using URLs. GraphQL, however, is a query language for your APIs. It uses a query to request the data that you need and a schema to describe the data that can be returned. Inside these schemas, you can point parts of GraphQL to code called resolvers. And resolvers are the code modules that deliver the data for that part of the schema. These resolvers could just call your REST APIs to retrieve the data for that part of the schema. 
And when you want data from GraphQL, you call the GraphQL using a query. And unlike a REST call, you don't get the complete set of data. You only get the data that you requested for in that query. You basically tell GraphQL which data elements you need. And that resolves the overfetching problem. When you request data from GraphQL, it will make all the underlying API calls it needs to complete the data model using its resolvers. This solves the problem of underfetching. On top of that, you can make multiple queries in GraphQL, reducing the overall chattiness associated with REST-based microservices. So what are the benefits of GraphQL over REST? Well, first of all, GraphQL can improve the performance of your applications. By reducing the total number of API calls, GraphQL improves performance by reducing the latency. By eliminating underfetching, it stops you having to chain calls together in sequence. By dealing with overfetching, you reduce the amount of data transfer and data processing, dramatically improving performance. GraphQL can simplify your applications by moving the data modeling and data formatting into GraphQL. It reduces the complexity in your applications for dealing with that logic. GraphQL can give your developers much more flexibility. With GraphQL, your developers are working with a predefined data model and they don't need to understand your underlying API architecture. Although GraphQL does help to fill that design gap, there are still many considerations that you need to make before you move to GraphQL. And one of those is caching. GraphQL is not very compatible with CDNs, as CDNs have been designed to cache individual resources, like a website URL or even a microservice URL. And the reason why GraphQL isn't compatible is that its queries are designed to span multiple resources in a single request. Also, GraphQL uses a POST request, which requires a lot more configuration inside a CDN. Another big consideration is that of rate limiting. With REST, one request represents one action or one resource, and therefore we can rate limit the number of requests. For instance, 30 requests per second. And this is how most API gateways work, such as Apigee. With GraphQL, however, there is a fan out problem. One request in GraphQL could result in calling hundreds of resolvers, which means that under the hood, it could be calling hundreds of API calls. The solution to this is usually something called a complexity score. And this is where GraphQL will calculate how complicated a particular request is and gives it a score. And it limits the request based on that complexity score. But what this means is that your developers need to understand this and actually code defensively to deal with this problem. A big misconception about GraphQL is that GraphQL is a database. It is not a database. It is a protocol. Okay, get this. It is not a database. It has nothing to do with storage. It is a protocol. It's a way that you can query your APIs, nothing else. So as you can see, GraphQL is really powerful and a great way of filling in that design gap. However, there are other ways that you can deal with this gap. And one of them is called a backend for a front end or a BFF. And I'd highly recommend you watch that video if you're interested in this area. But before you go, don't forget to subscribe and like this video. But for now, it's time to say thank you, goodbye, and I'll see you next time.